If you're just getting started on keyframing and looking for something that'll teach you the basics, well, you're in the right place because in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to get started with using keyframes. Hey guys, my name is Chad and welcome back to Epidemic Media, the channel that is all about helping you become a better video creator. So in this video, we're going to go over how to get started on keyframes and the different ways that you can use them. They are pretty versatile and you can use them in a variety of different ways. You'll pretty much see for yourself how incredibly useful keyframes are when creating videos. Remember, if you want to see more videos that are all about helping you become a better video creator, you may want to hit that subscribe button so that you can be kept up to date with all of Epidemic Media's latest content. But let's not wait any longer and jump straight into keyframes. And we are back in Final Cut Pro. Now, before we get into keyframing and before I show you how to use keyframes, first let me explain what a keyframe actually is. The way I see keyframes is sort of like start and stop signals. So basically you would set a start signal at some point in your video and then you would set an end signal or a stop signal at another point after that. And between these two points, certain changes will occur in your video. Now you can use keyframes for a ton of things. It can be things like setting the scale, setting the position of a particular element of your video, setting and adjusting the volume, the list literally goes on. Now how you would know if you can add a keyframe to a particular element of a video, if you go over into your inspector, so for example I've got this video right over here, and this is the inspector for that clip, if you look at this icon, you can see it's like a little diamond and it's got an add. And you can even see that if you hover your cursor over it, it says add a keyframe. So everywhere that you see this particular button, that is something that you can add a keyframe to. Okay, so let's get into it. Now for this particular video, I am going to add a title. So as you can see, if I scrub over the clip, it slowly reveals that mountain out in the distance right over there. And what I want to do is add a title that would also come down revealing the location of where this clip was taken. It was actually taken in a city called Cape Town in South Africa. So all I'm going to do is add the title Cape Town at the top and it's going to move along as the mountain gets revealed along the top of the mountain. So because we're adding a title, I'm going to head on over and add my title in. Okay, so now that my title is all sorted out, I can start creating some keyframes to move the title to wherever I need it to be. So because this clip is sort of like a linear movement, just like that, the title is only going to need to move from the top of the screen to the bottom. It's not very hard, uh, it's actually pretty simple. So for the sake of this video, it's just to get you used to the idea of what it's just to explain what keyframes are and how they work. Sometimes you will need to move your title or whatever else you're animating to different parts of the screen, but in this particular example, it's literally just moving from the top to the bottom, sort of in a straight line. So to get started, I'm gonna scrub on over to just before you see the, uh, the top of the mountain starts being revealed. And I'm gonna lock it in right over there. And when you're adjusting the position of your title, there are two ways of doing that. The first way, is to head over into your inspector, click and hold on your Y or your X axis. Because I'm moving vertically, I'm gonna use my Y axis. And if you scroll up and down, you can adjust it just like that. Or alternatively, if you come on over to your transform tool, give that a click, this box will appear around the outside of the display and that'll allow you to move it freely using your mouse by just clicking and holding and then moving it up. Also, while you're in your transform tool, you'll notice that there is another button over here so that you can actually add a keyframe in here. You don't have to keep scrolling back and forth to your inspector to create new keyframes. So for example, if I were to create a keyframe at this position, at this point of the clip, you'll see that it has changed the color. So all of these are filled in with yellow and that means that there is a keyframe active at this point in your video or in your clip. For now, I'm just going to deactivate that. So in this clip, because the title's just moving in a straight line, downwards. I'm just going to click my keyframe right over there. As you can see, if I move my cursor away, it's filled in yellow, which means there is a keyframe activated. And I need to now move my title to the top of the mountain. So click and hold the Y position, scroll upwards, 
just until it's out of the screen. So now because I've created a keyframe right over there, it's holding that position of my title up at the top of the screen while just outside the top of the screen. And now if I scrub over, I want to get it to the point where the uh, mountain stops moving vertically, which is about there. So of course now the full mountain is in view and I would like my title to be displayed on top of the mountain. So I'd make sure that my title is selected. And once you've created your first keyframe, you don't have to create, uh, keep clicking this button. Final Cut Pro automatically has activated another keyframe for this point. I just turned the opacity up just because you couldn't really see. I had it a little lower down and it hid the title a little bit too much. So I just turned it up so that you could see it a little better. So now if we go ahead and play this clip, you'll see that the title will move, but notice how it moves. Alright, so as you can see, it moved sort of to how we wanted it to move. However, there were certain points where it came too low down and sort of crossed over the mountain. It wasn't moving at the same speed as what the uh, mountain was being revealed. And the way you can fix that is pretty simple. So you click on your timeline and if you use your arrows to scroll back and forth, you just want to find the point that it goes yellow, which I, there we go, I just passed it. So that is where the title stopped moving. So what you can do in this case, because the uh, title and the image or the clip is not moving at the same rate, is add a few more keyframes in between the start and the stop keyframes. The easiest way to do that is to zoom in and create a marker so if I zoom in to 50%, I'm going to use the bottom or the base of the T right over there. And as you can see, it's at the bottom of this cloud right over here. If I hit my left arrow and go back just one frame, the bottom of the T is now slightly off. But since I'm using it as a marker, I can just come on over to my inspector, click the Y axis so that I can move it up or down, which will automatically create a keyframe and move it up slightly. And then go through each frame and do the same, just to keep the distance consistent throughout the entire clip. So I am going to speed this up just so that you don't have to sit here and watch me adjusting frame by frame. Okay, now that looks a lot better and a lot smoother. The movement of the uh, title is a lot smoother and also it's not crossing over the mountain at any point. Something that you want to keep in mind when creating more keyframes and getting that smoother motion is to find a base or an anchor point. Like in this example, I use the bottom of the T and just kept it lined up with the bottom of the cloud throughout each frame so that the words or the title can be the exact same distance from the mountain throughout the entire clip. Also, sometimes when you're getting started with keyframes, you're gonna mess up and it's kinda gonna get to the point of no repair and you're gonna have to start over. And the quickest way to start from the very beginning, if it does come to that, is to click on the element that you wanna work with, right click, show video animation, click on that, and then this will come up. These are all your keyframes that you've created. If you click one, it'll highlight in yellow and just hit delete. If you want to start from the very beginning and erase everything that you've done, click on the first one, hold down shift, go to the very last one, click on that one, they'll all highlight yellow. And that is the basics of keyframing. I hope this video gives you a better understanding on keyframes and how you can use them while creating your videos. Remember, if you found this video useful, please give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or there's anything you'd like to see being covered on Epidemic Media, feel free to drop a comment. And to see more videos like this in future, remember to hit that subscribe button so that you can be kept up to date with all of our latest videos.